Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. Welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're gonna to be talking about what happens when we have data that may or may not be there. A lot of the times we have like a function that for example returns data. Let's just say we're reading a file, but what happens if the file could not be read? What happens if we couldn't load the file? If it's not present, if the data just isn't in the format that we expect? we still need to return something from the function. Now, a lot of the time in that particular scenario, you might just return an empty string, but that's not really that great because it doesn't make much sense. I mean, what if the file was just empty? There should be a way for us to actually see if the data was present or if the data wasn't present. And that's where STD optional comes in. So STD optional is new in C++ 17, and it's gonna be like part of like a three part mini series in which we cover three different classes, three different new types that C++ gives us to deal with data that either may or may not be there, or is of a type that we're not sure about. So let's jump in and take a little bit of a look at some code that could be written one way, but now with STD optional, we have a better way of dealing with data that may or may not be there. So this is gonna be a super simple example. I'm starting with absolutely no code at all. And what I'm gonna do is write a little function which reads a file. So this will basically be like read string from file, right? Or maybe we'll rename it to read file as string. So this should return the entire file, for example, as a string. So we'll take in a const std string file path. And then over here, we'll just have an input file stream. We'll take in the file path of what we actually want to read. I'll just quickly include f stream. And yes, I will make a video soon about how to read files in C++. I know I haven't done that yet. And now that we have our input file stream, what we want to do is read it if it's valid, if the file was open successfully, or if it wasn't, we have to handle that as well. So very simply, we can just write if stream and then we'll read the file here and then eventually we'll just close that file stream. However, if it didn't work out, right? We need to handle that as well. So usually we might do that. And in fact, if I just write this code a bit differently, we would basically return our string that we read. So let's just say we had an STD string with our result, And then we basically read that file over here and then we returned our result, right? That would be what it would be like if it was successful. And then if it's not successful, well, what do we return, right? We could just return an empty string or we could return um, a string constructed like this, which is the same exact result. But the point is, it's kind of hard for us to know if that file was open successfully or not, because as you can imagine, if we have our data here and it's our read file as string and we have our file path, which is let's just say data.txt, if we have that here, what, how do we check if that was open successfully? Well, we, we'd basically have to do something like if data doesn't equal nothing, right? And then treat it as that, that's, that's not nice at all. What I would much prefer is some way of actually knowing if that data was read successfully or not. Because again, maybe that file was there, but it was empty. That might be valid. We need a way to know if it's not valid. And so another solution might be to basically have this output boolean, right? Which was, you know, success, let's just say, right? It's a boolean that we pass by reference. It's going to be our output variable. So I might call it out success. And then if the stream was opened, you know, we'll set success to true and we'll return that. Otherwise we'll, success, we'll set success uh, to false and we'll basically just return an empty string. So in that case, instead of doing this, we need to take in a boolean, which is basically um, file opened successfully. And then we simply pass that into here, right? And then we can check that. And that obviously reads a lot better than an empty string. However, it's still not particularly nice. So that is where std optional can help us. std optional, which we can uh, include by just including the optional header file here, is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's optional as to whether or not the data is present. So we change this to be std optional. And then of course, we still have our string as our type that is optional. And you can see that it's giving me an error here saying that namespace std has no member optional. As I mentioned earlier, this is a C++ 17 feature. So make sure that you go into your settings, into your compiler settings and switch your language version to C++ 17. And then now what we do is we, we still treat everything as it was before. And somehow I removed the uh, F stream include for some reason. So we still do everything that we did before, right? We'll get rid of this out success boolean. We don't need that anymore. Um, and then instead of returning an empty string, what we can do is return an empty std optional. And you can do that just by having curly brackets like this. And then if we want our string to be returned, we simply return result. And you can see it's really that simple. And then if we scroll down into main here, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this. 
we change this to be an STD optional STD string, right? Or optionally, you could use auto, right? That's also fine. And then what we do is we just check data dot has value. And if has value is true, that means that optional has been set and we can basically, we'll just log out to the console file read successfully. And by the way, just a quick note while I was editing this video, this is future Cherno talking. You can also just write if data because there's a bool operator. So instead of having to write data dot has value, if data is also totally legit. And I think it looks even cleaner and nicer. Anyway, back to past Cherno. Otherwise, if it doesn't have value, then we know that that file was not read successfully. So file could not be opened. Okay, so we have two different branches here based on whether or not that data was actually set or not. And of course, to access it, we have a bunch of ways to access it as well. We can simply use data and then arrow, and then we just have our string there. We can also simply dereference that string. So we'll say this is our string and it is just basically data dereference like that and we can access it as a normal string. So it's much the same as a smart pointer in terms of if you want to actually access that data. And in fact, I think there's also a data dot value which you can use. So let's test this out and see if that works. What I'll do is just create a dummy file here. I'll make sure that I'm in show all files and just in sandbox, I will create a new file and I'll just call it data.text. We might just throw in some data into here. And then here it is in my uh, solution explorer. What I'll do is try and load it. So there's data.text, of course. If I hit, uh, I'll just throw in a little c in.get here so that our console doesn't close immediately. And we'll just run this program. You can see the file was read successfully. Now let's just say that file didn't exist. I'll go ahead and delete it. We'll hit F5 and you can see that it says file could not be opened. So easily now we're able to switch on whether or not that file was read successfully. Now there's one other really useful thing that we can do with this. Let's just say that we're trying to read the file and we don't really care too much about whether or not the file was read or not. Like as in, we still care about it, but it's not the end of the world if the file couldn't be opened. Because if the file couldn't be opened or if that particular section of the file wasn't set or wasn't read, maybe we have a default value for it. That's also quite common. So what we can actually do is have std string value and we can set this to data dot value or, all right? And what this will do is exactly what it sounds like. If the if the data is actually present in that STD optional, it will return to us that string. If it's not, it will return whatever value we pass in here. So we can say, um, you know, not present, for example, right? This is really useful for if you're actually parsing files and trying to, for example, extract like variables or any kind of elements that have been set, because quite often, you might have something that is literally optional to have in the file. And if a certain parameter was not set in the file, you can go with a default value of what you specify here. This is so useful because for example, we could just simply have an int here, count for example, maybe we're trying to run a benchmark and in the file it says how many times to run the benchmark. Now, if this was present in the file, we can extract that count, right? By just calling count.value or if it wasn't present, we can go with a default value of 100. And you can see how we can do that because in this case, this would come from the file. So let's test that out as well. What we'll do is we will log that value. And of course, since the file does not exist, what we should see in this case, I'll just log an end line as well. What we should see in this case is not present. As you can see, that's what we get, not present because the file couldn't be opened. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. STD optional, as I mentioned, is incredibly useful and you can see that it really does help kind of simplify your code and hopefully let you produce more readable code. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can also help support everything that I do here on YouTube by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all the patrons that make these videos possible. Leave a comment below on what you want to see me cover next. I do have a very long list, of course, and as I mentioned earlier, SCD variant and SCD any are on that list as well. Super useful. C17 is actually such a great release. I might actually make a video on my favorite C17 features, so if you're not subscribed, make sure that you do that so that you don't miss that. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.